Coming up on today's episode of the Pumpkin Patch Show. Firewall's next update gets some more details. IGN shit the bed with their Borderlands 2 VR review. I give you my Red Matter review. And GameSpot go hands-on with Ace Combat 7 VR. So let's jump right in. So hey there everyone, I am Petrifying Pumpkins, I'll be your host today as always on the Pumpkin Patch Show and we have a fantastic show lined up for you today. Today I'm joined by my very special guest, Karen. Karen, say hello. Anyway, Christmas is coming up very soon and uh, I asked my niece actually what she was going to get for Christmas. And she said that she was going to get a Nintendo Switch so that she could play Fortnite with all her friends. I told her, of course, that she was a stupid idiot for not getting the PSVR headsets because it is the future of gaming. My sister doesn't want me coming around the house anymore. I'm, I'm going to be spending Christmas alone this year. Anyway, Firewall Zero Hour. Stop asking me about dedicated servers, lads. So on Friday just gone, we got ourselves another update from ya boy Shabs from First Contact Entertainment and he brought with him a couple of moist making bullet points. So the first one is that the DLC that's coming on the 18th, which is very close now, will include several different types of in-game content, whatever that means. Now the word on the streets is that one of these types of contents will be a new map for us to run around in. And if this comment by Hess is anything to go by, I think that may be the case. Now the next bullet point is that the update will bring a few fixes and improvements to the game that I'm sure we'll all appreciate, including the much requested solution for getting rid of AFK players. So will it be vote to kick? Will it be an automatic kick after a certain period of inactivity? We will find those on the 18th. In the meantime, let me know what you guys want to see in DLC number 3 in the comments below. Now, I recently did a poll on my channel asking what kind of map you guys would like to see and let me tell you the results were as divided as American politics. But you want to know what I think? I think we should make snow maps great again and that we should build a wall around forest and jungle maps. Get them out of here. Moving swiftly on. Something, something, IGN, something, something, ignorant. Borderlands 2 VR just came out and I'm wondering do you guys like this? I personally am having a good time with this, but not so for a certain IGN reviewer who recently scored the game a whopping 3 out of 10. But that's fine because, you know, reviews are subjective, you know, everyone has an opinion, you know? Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Yeah. Well, the reviewer in question turns out he lampooned things like not being able to jump or run or strafe and that you were forced to have blinders and da 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 da. And of course, if he actually just went to the settings menu, he could have disabled or enabled any of those things. The settings are very comprehensive in that game. So this guy didn't even check the settings for all these complaints and he put them into his review and he wrecked the game's score based on a lot of that. There were lies, essentially. Basically, even if they weren't intentionally lies, they were. he just filled that review with misinformation. And he got paid to do that, right? So I feel like IGN is certainly deserving of a lot of the flack that it's getting as a result of this review. Most noticeably from PSV or YouTuber and butcher of the English language, Polish Paul, he posted a thread over on Redis after IGN pulled their review from their site after the whole debacle ensued, and they even pulled their score from Metacritic. But in that post on Reddit that Polish Paul made, there was a comment from Dan Stapleton. He is the reviews editor over at IGN. And I'll put it up on the screen and we can read it together because reading is fun. Hey everyone, IGN's reviews editor here. We're very sorry about this whole situation. It's never our intention to mislead our readers and viewers or misrepresent any developer's work. Obviously, this reviewer was not careful enough in verifying his assumptions about Borderland 2 VR's movement and comfort options before writing his review. 
and we definitely don't want reviews based on incorrect information. As soon as the issues were brought to my attention last night, I verified the problem and then pulled the review from the site and YouTube. The fact that this happened on a Friday evening made it difficult to pull it from everywhere at once and contacted Metacritic to have the score withdrawn. We started over with a different reviewer and hope to have a new, factually accurate review up before the end of the coming week. Thanks for bearing with us. And I think IGN are dealing with this issue correctly. They've pulled the review from their size on YouTube, they've withdrawn the score from Metacritic, they're getting a new person in to redo the review, hopefully right this time. And they also made an official statement about the whole thing over on their website, which was pretty much the same thing as what Dan Stapleton posted on that Reddit thread. However, this should never have happened in the first place and the damage might already be done. I mean, how many people who've seen the original review will actually go back and check the updated review or will even be aware that the original review was pulled in the first place? I'm guessing, you know, there'll be a lot of people who won't know anything about that at all and they'll just go by the original review. So I feel like if IGN had a dedicated VR reviewer or at least some member of their team who actually had a bit of experience in the VR department, this could have all been avoided in the first place. And we can only hope that the damage done to Borderland 2 VR's reputation can recover. Speaking of review, I'm a professional reviewer nonetheless. So last week, the good people over at Vertical Robots sent me a review code for Red Matter. So I checked it out. Red Matter is a VR first person puzzler game set on Rhea, one of Saturn's moons. So the plot sees you working for a fictional country that is definitely not America and you're infiltrating a moon base belonging to another fictional country which is definitely not the Soviet Union and your whole goal is to steal some sensitive information from this moon base and that's all I'll say about the intriguing plot I don't want to spoil anything for anyone so the gameplay of Red Matter revolves around you using your two move controllers to unlock doors and gain access past security system in order to move deeper and deeper throughout this moon base so the whole thing takes about three to four hours depending on how good you are at figuring out logic puzzles and at a price point of around 30 euro I found that the price was justifiable because I did enjoy the game itself. The visuals on show in Red Matter are on the high end of what you can expect to find on a PSVR game as well as the audio design and the voice acting they're all of a high standard in my opinion the puzzles themselves i find were generally made well for the majority of the game although i found towards the very end of the game the last couple of puzzles they were quite easy especially when you compare them to the puzzles that you had just completed to get there so maybe the puzzles were a bit unevenly designed maybe my only other complaint then is that the movement took a bit of time to get used to all your locomotion is controlled on one move controller, including teleportation and stuff like that. And the movement itself felt a bit sluggish. I would have preferred if they went the route of Skyrim and now Borderlands 2 with the way they do movement. You can get used to it, it's not a deal breaker. So overall, I found Red Matter to be a highly enjoyable title and I'll give that a solid 8 out of 10. Now speaking of solid, Namco demonetize my videos when they show his combat 7 footage. So Ace Combat 7 had some hands-on previews lately and I want to focus on one that GameSpot did and they had high praise for the V or portion of Ace Combat 7 that they got to try out. Now they did confirm that there was only three missions which is very disappointing as we all know but they still went into a bit of detail on how VR works and how good it is. So Rob Handerly of GameSpot is the one who was playing Ace Combat 7 in VR and he went on to say that it was one of the coolest VR experiences that he ever had. Even though it did make him sick after playing this and even though he does claim to not suffer from motion sickness very much. So that's interesting. Now his co-worker pointed out that the fact that you're getting sick in Ace Combat kind of means that it's doing its job because if you were in the Pfizer Jets in real life, if you were in the backseat of that thing and the pilot was spinning around and doing all this stuff, you probably would feel a little bit queasy. That's not to say that everyone's going to be sick playing this or that there won't be comfort settings that will sort that out or whatever, but uh, I think that sounds cool. I'm personally one of the people who never suffers from motion sickness, so 
I'm very much looking forward to testing this out and see if it can do a number on me. So Rob went on to say that there were moments during his demo that it felt like an evolution of the flight sim genre and that PSVR owners should be very excited. So that's huge praise, you know, and especially seeing as it's coming from GameSpot. So it's great to see that these mainstream gaming outlets are covering these VR aspects of these games and they're being positive about it. So I'm very happy to see that always. Ace Combat 7 was one of my most anticipated games for 2018. Of course, it slipped to 2019, but it's early 2019. It's just a month away now at this point. So we're very close, surprisingly close. It kind of snuck up on me. So I hope you guys will be keeping an eye on that. I certainly will. What do you think about Ace Combat 7, Karen? Are you interested in flight sims or what? Excuse me, I have to end this video right now, but if you enjoyed this video, then please consider doing all the usual shite to help me out. Thanks for watching, and bye for now, I'll see you guys in the next one.